Thanks, Jake. Andrew, what are your thoughts on Jake's question? Uh, I mean, I'm I'm really against robo advisor stuff, so maybe I don't have the most unbiased answer for you. Um, let's talk real quick about what that is. So basically, robo advisor would be like Terminator managing your portfolio. <laughs> I'll um, be back. Yeah, or 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 AI or whatever algorithm, however you want to just think of it. But basically, the gist of most of that kind of stuff is you put in how old you are. So let's say I'm 31 or 32 years old, somewhere in that ballpark. Um, and you know, they're going to say, well, because you're, you're not quite 35 yet, but you're above 30, maybe we should put you in 90% stocks, 10% bonds. And then maybe you turn 40 and then they're going to be like, okay, maybe we'll, we'll adjust you now. And you'll go 80% stocks, 20% bonds. And they can kind of they can adjust it that way through their formulas, or you could tell them, Hey, I want to be a little more risky or I want to be a little more conservative and they could change the numbers that way. And that's kind of how they do it. Um, and so, you know, kind of going back to the whole ETF thing, you have that whole mix of it, but the downside to that obviously is, is you have no control whatsoever. Right. And so with that, you're basically, at the very least, if you're talking to a financial advisor or or somebody's picking stocks for you, at least you know you're able to trust them. But in this case, you're trusting like an algorithm or 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 a formula. I don't know, like call me old fashioned, but something something there. Uh, you know, I saw like a meme the other day. Um, the context of this is Bitcoin has been crashing lately, and so there was a meme. They put Elon Musk's face up, and they had like the Karen hair, and it was like. It was basically Elon Musk saying, "Can I speak to Bitcoin's manager, please?" <laughs> and, and you know, and I think of that when I think of something like a robo, where it's like an AI thing, and and you really don't have any recourse. And it, I just, I, I just don't like anything about that idea. So I could never recommend something like that. I have, uh, I have experience with uh, Betterment. Uh, I use them. Gosh, when I first started working for Wells Fargo, I wanted to open. Uh, an account to where I could put some money in and invest it and earn a better return than the savings accounts that the bank I was working for offered at the time. So um, I opened an account with Betterment and it was very similar to like the questions. It was a basic Roth IRA. And I believe I could invest $50 every paycheck, which would make the account free. If I had invested more, then it would be free. But because I was starting out at a bank, I didn't make a ton of money. So that was a, a better choice for me at that time. So um, that's kind of what I went with. And they had several, I guess, menu choices that you could choose from. And like Andrew said, they were asking like what my risk tolerance was, how old I was, how soon before I retired, what my goals were. And then they allocated the money that I invested every month, every two weeks into the portfolio that they set up. And I, so I had zero input in any of the choices, which at the time I was okay with, but then the stock market actually started to take a turn down. And so I kept investing, but it wouldn't let me, it wouldn't let me allocate to other things into some of the ETFs that were down more than the other ones. So I felt trapped because I couldn't, I couldn't put the money in. I couldn't take the money out because then I would have to pay any capital gains on any gains I made because it had been less than a year. So I was like, oh, so I was trapped, but so I kept investing, but instead of putting more money into the ETFs that were down more so I could you know, take advantage of what we were just talking about with ETFs a few minutes ago, it, it locked me into a, a stylized portfolio that I had zero input in. And so I didn't care for that. And so when my year passed and I could sell my positions and take the money out without having to pay any capital gains on the short-term money that I'd made, I immediately closed the account because I just, it wasn't anything that Betterment did that turned me off. It was simply the way that they had the portfolio set up that it wouldn't allow me to make adjustments to adapt to what was happening in the market. And I didn't like that. I just, it, it made me feel trapped. And so I, I didn't care for that. And 
So that was my experience with it. Now I know uh, Andy Schuler, our, our business partner, he had an experience with a robo advisor recently where the market he's, I think younger than both of us and are close to it. <laughs> and uh, he, he was in a robo advisor. And when the, when the market started to turn, it automatically started putting some of his money into it. It opened a bond fund for him and started putting money into a bond fund for him. And he was very against that. He did not want anything to do with that. When the market was going down, he wanted to put more money into the stocks because he knew that was what he should do. But the robo-advisor, the AI, was taught the classic you know, rotation out of stocks into bonds when things start to go south. And he didn't want to do that. And he had no control over that. I know that was very frustrating for him. So there, there are some certainly some benefits to it because like you said, it's a set it and forget it. And it can earn you a decent return, but it also gives you zero control. And so if you're okay with that, then yeah, sure, fine. But if you're not, then I would, I guess I would either ask more questions about whether this would be a good fit for you, or I guess think about, it's just something really that you want to really want to invest in. Yeah. I mean, basically I like to have my hands on the wheel, so I rest my case. Yeah. 